Welcome to a special edition of the Tyler's Place Podcast. I'm your host, Maynard Edwards. If you have been following TV stuff at all over the last couple of weeks, you've probably caught ads for the new show on AMC, which is the same network that carries The Walking Dead and Better Call Saul and a bunch of other really, really popular shows. You've seen the promos for Lodge 49. Lodge 49 is a new show. It's about a surfer dude named Dud. It's uh, short for Dudley. Sean Dudley is the guy's name, played by Wyatt Russell, who is Kurt Russell's son and Goldie Hawn's son as well, I guess I should say. And Dud basically finds this mysterious ring on a beach. Turns out it belongs to a fraternal order called the Ancient and Benevolent Order of the Lynx. Now, this is a quasi-Masonic group, but the show doesn't portend to be about Freemasonry, although... There's a definite wink and a nod towards Mason. So we wanted to find out a little bit about it. I have to say the show is very well done. It's quirky. It's a little funny. It, there's some dramatic elements. It's a very interesting show. You can check it out now online if you go to amc.com or it airs Monday nights on AMC. So check your local listings for that. But joining me now on the program to talk about it are the creators and producers of the show, Jim Gavin and Peter Oko, who are joining us by phone from Hollywood. Guys, I have to tell you, I think what you're doing with the show is very well done, so much so that I have to ask you, who in your family, in your circle of friends, where does Freemasonry come in into your life? Because it's such an accurate look. And and such an honest look at it that someone in your life has to be involved in masonry somehow. That's kind of my only explanation for it. That's really fantastic to hear. Um, and uh, yeah, I this is Jim, uh, by the way. Um, yeah, no, I that is lovely to hear. I will say that, um, and I hope this is, doesn't, uh, and, you know less in our credibility with you, but I, I don't I don't know any Masons. I mean, I do know some, but I, I haven't spent in, in, any much time in the lodges. Um, a lot of it was just kind of my interest in the kind of esoteric history of Freemasonry, um, the historical aspects of it, the way it, it, the way it kind of beautifully creates its own myth. Um, those were the driving forces for me, I have spent time in health lodges and other kind of, you know, uh, of the similar ilk, but I would obviously Freemasonry is its own, its own thing. And for us, it was just a matter of, I wanted to capture both the, the, for me, what is a seductive and mysterious aspect of, of, you know, the, the scholarship and the history of Freemasonry alongside the very real kind of solidarity and real human relationships that I think these places, you know, offer up. Um, and that was kind of the starting point for us. And, you know, when we were went into production, we were we did we were touring, you know, Elk Lodges and Freemason Lodges. We went to the um, there here in uh, or down in Long Beach there's a big, beautiful Scottish Rite um, yep, temple, I know it well. um in in downtown that of course Ernest Borgnine was a was a proud member of. Um, and so all that was just really inspiring to us. And, you know, I think just to ramble on this a little longer, the, whenever I've seen anything about a, uh, a, a secret society, you know, a society that, you know, does, uh, have a ritual and historical aspect, it, it is always portrayed in, in a really, in my mind, a silly and sinister light and never quite get to what I, I think is the real human reality and meaning of these places. So that we could pull off any of that, uh, and that you would think so, I think is a great uh, delight to me and Peter, for sure. Yeah, I, I think I just a second what Jim said. It, it always seems like it's been portrayed as either goofy or sinister, and uh, I, I think we just wanted to avoid that <laughs> at all times. You guys are 100% correct about that. I mean, it, when Freemasonry ends up in a film, in a book, in a television show, usually it's the whole, oh, we can, we can tell you, but we'll have to kill you afterwards type of thing, or there's, there's intrigue, or, or like you said, it's a sinister look, or, or really just silly. You guys haven't done any of that with Lodge 49 that I've seen so far, and I'm only a couple of episodes in. 
I do have to ask you, though, what is it that drew you to a fraternity like this, a fraternal organization, as, as sort of a backdrop for a story? I will say, you know, we, we are kind of inspired by historical, you know, historical things, but we have totally created our own, our own order, our own, it, it, you know, it has its own history and origins and ritual, and it is, the actual history of it is going to become a source of, of, of adventure in a way. Like we do, I mean, things do get crazy. We're telling a, a night squire fable. And so there are there are these things, but it, we never leave in our mind like a grounded reality in the sense that these are all people dealing with real problems, uh, you know, struggling to make ends meet, a million different things. But uh, the lodge is this kind of place that, offers them a bit of magic in their lives and you know when crazy stuff happens and you know it's it's not just for the sake of being crazy it's actually meaningful to them in some way yeah no we, we spent a lot of time thinking about the high and the low and I, and I think it's something you probably relate to but the idea of being in a place where you know there's cheap beer but you can also sort of delve into philosophy <laughs> you know those things together are, you know, it's hard to find that, um, and I think this is, you know, it's just an arena where you're able to go a little bit deeper without it feeling like preachy or, or, or precious. Yeah. Yeah, I, I should tell listeners who have not seen the show, uh, in one of the very first scenes when our hero, Dud, brings this Lynx ring to a pawn shop, the, he shows it to the pawn shop owner, and the pawn shop owner says, oh yeah, that's a that's a Lynx ring, it's a fraternal order like the Masons or like the Elks, which, you know, immediately tells the viewer that this is not about Freemasonry, this is not about Elks, this is its own thing, which I, I thought is great for you guys to establish, and, and, but... Once that is done, I have to say it's it's really interesting how accurate it is. The only thing I saw that you guys did that was not real accurate was there was a bar in the back of the Lynx Lodge, and and there are some lodges that have bars in them, but it was like packed with you know forty or fifty people, and the lodge is trying to be sold as sort of a down and out type of thing, but uh, any Masonic lodge has got fifty people showing up is is far from down and out really. So that was the one like you know where I raised my eyebrow kind of thing. Yeah. Oh, it's for COVID. Yeah, for you. I mean, and I'm, I'm sure we'll there'll be other glaring errors, but like I said, I think that's why we wanted to create our own thing. Like I think our, our the antecedents are, are are pretty clear, but right. Um, you know, we you know we we're we wanted to try our own so something that feels like a kind of a bit of a composite and loving homage to reality, but in the end, we are still telling a, a fictional tale with its own parameters. Um, but to give you an example, uh, uh, Paul Giamatti, who's our, our executive producer, he was uh, he told an anecdote about being an, uh, a teacher driver. He was getting uh, driven to set. He was having a friendly chat with the driver, and they were talking, and Paul ended up telling him, yeah, I'm, doing, I'm going to do this show uh, called Lodge 49 that's coming out, and he's telling him about it, and the teacher is uh, like, oh, like that sounds great, I'm a mason, and so Paul, Paul loves all this stuff, and they're talking, and, he, <laughs> and the guy just happens to mention, yeah, a couple years ago, um, we found a, a, a like, they, they kind of found false wall in their lodge, and they found a body in there, like, it was kind of like, Someone had died in the wall. <laughs> like that's just something totally crazy, but it was it was just also kind of grounded in reality in a way. And that type of stuff is kind of music to our ears <laughs> on some level, you know. Um, right. We do. We do. You know. Um, so so you will yeah you will have plenty to chew on and yeah I'm sure some of it will be totally outlandish, but I actually think more often than not we'll will be you know kind of hit those more human notes of reality. I was just going to say, I think Jim and I are, are just, we're, we're very interested in, in watching people who believe in something rather than getting obsessed about what they believe. So it's not so much about the secrets contained within the lodge 
as it is the crazy people contained within the lodge and what they may or may not, you know, choose to believe in their lives. Since this podcast is for Freemasons, and we know that Masons can keep a secret, can you uh, tip your hand a little bit about some things that might be happening a little bit later on in the season without without giving away too much? Okay. Well, uh, the story Jim just told about a body in the wall, you might want to remember that. Oh, bodies in the wall, no big deal in Freemasonry. I'm here at the House of the Temple in Washington, and there are two bodies in the wall here. And I, I wish I could tell you I was kidding, but that is indeed a fact. Uh, before I let you guys go, tell me a, a little bit about your thoughts about Dud, who's, who, who is really this perpetual optimist. Uh, and he, you know, he's, he's really, he's had a string of bad luck, but he really wants things to be okay. And I, I, that makes him sort of a, a fun character to root for in this whole process. It, it is a, you know, it's an, we live in interesting times, and I think Doug represents a bit of optimism, even if it's delusional at times. And I think we write from a place, it's just uh, kind of, uh, you know, we, we do believe in community and, and uh, a, the, I think the idea of a place where different types of people can gather. And I think, uh, you know, our show tries to embody that, so, you know, in the way that uh, Freemasonry is, you know, is, is, you know, best expression does. And so, I don't know, we're, we're trying to create a joy ride of a show. We, in the end, we just want it to be fun and entertaining. And But if we can create characters that feel real and and familiar, that that's just a lovely bonus. Yeah, no, I mean, as a... As a as a, a side effect to all of this, it creates more interest in lodges. That would be the best thing ever, I think. If it, if it actually creates a situation where people put their phones down and show up somewhere face to face, uh, that would be a huge win for us. So. Absolutely, because I'm sure there are a lot of guys out there like Dud who are looking for something and, and hoping to find it. And, and I would bet that for a lot of them, that Freemasonry would be one of those places where they could find it. So, guys, thank you for the work you're doing on the show. Uh, great show. It's fun. It's interesting. And uh, I'm really looking forward to watching more of it and chatting with you guys again. Again, the show is called Lodge 49. It's on AMC. You can watch it on your AMC app, which is available pretty well everywhere, or uh, check your local listings for AMC. It's the same network that does The Walking Dead, and they did Mad Men, and, uh, you know, they've, they've done Better Call Saul and Breaking Bad. So this is a network that knows how to make good TV shows and Lodge 49 is definitely a good TV show. Thank you guys for tuning in. And by the way, if you're curious about the fact and the fiction of Lodge 49, we've put together a little website called Lodge49Secrets.com. That's Lodge, the number four, the number nine, Secrets.com. And we're going to, as the episodes progress, take a look at some of the fact and fiction behind what's happening at Lodge 49 and what might happen in an authentic Masonic Lodge. So check that out when you get a second. Don't forget, listen to all the episodes of the Tyler's Place podcast online wherever you listen to podcasts i'm your host maynard edwards and thanks for joining me i'll catch you next time here on the tyler's place